Hi, it's Alaska Granny. No more panic buying for your food storage. Plan out your meals. Shop for your prepper pantry just like you do for your regular meals. Don't just randomly grab stuff in the store. That leads to the feelings of insecurity and panic and being unprepared. Plan out your emergency meals just like you do your regular meals. You want to have plenty so that you have the food that you need no matter if there are shortages, you can't get to the store, or there's some kind of an emergency situation that's out of all of our control. So here are some ideas of how you can have extra food in your food storage stockpile in your prepper pantry and how you can put together some meal ideas of extra foods to have in your prepper pantry food storage. Breakfast can be as simple as some granola bars, maybe some fruit, some juice, a glass of milk. It doesn't have to be complicated. This is also the right kind of food that you can have in your bug out bag. You can keep them in your car for a get home bag. You just need to make sure that you pay attention to the dates and you rotate them. Yes, they will last a little longer, but because of the nature of all the ingredients in them, they do tend to become stale. Just like other foods, the better you store them, the longer they're going to last. Take them out of the cardboard box and store them in a plastic container with a lid or even into a Ziploc bag for an extra layer of airtight container. Maybe you like to eat cereal. I can remember when my kids were little and there was a certain time of year before school started when cereal went on sale and you could buy it for like a dollar a box. I think those days are completely gone but it's still time that you can find cereal on sale. But don't overbuy because it does get stale. You can put it into an airtight container and it'll help it last longer. Pay attention to the date on the cereal and you need to sort of use that as a very strict guideline for things like cereals because there's so many ingredients in them and they do become stale. Store them in an airtight container can help them last longer but they're really not the type of food that you can try to seal up to last for years and years. Pay attention to the serving size because a box of cereal might say it has oodles of servings and if your kids are anything like mine, that's not even close to the amount of cereal that my kids like to eat. They would pour big huge bowls and that was what they needed for their meal. So don't be caught short because you paid attention just to what they say is a serving. You might even look at what their serving size is, pour that in a bowl, and see if that's enough. That's how you can determine how much cereal you actually need, is to pour it out in the bowl and then see what is that measurement and how many servings are in a box. Cereal needs milk. You can find the shelf-stable milk that comes in a carton. It's the UHT, or ultra high temperature, and it's been something like double pasteurized so that it can last on the shelf in your pantry for like a year or two. I've stored the cartons of milk in my refrigerator unopened. A year past the date, it still tasted fine. Powdered milk is great too. My favorite is the Nido Fortificata. You can find it on the Hispanic aisle. It's not usually with the other powdered milk. This is powdered whole milk. It actually is very delicious. It's the only powdered milk that anyone in my family can tolerate. So if you haven't found a powdered milk that you like, look for this one. Or add this to your stockpile because maybe it can help the non-fat milk taste better. Yes, the non-fat milk will store longer, but if nobody enjoys it and nobody wants to eat it, you don't want to stock up on food that no one's going to enjoy. And that was the problem that I had with the regular non-fat dry milk. It didn't matter what brand I bought. It didn't matter how I tried to doctor it up. There wasn't even a way I could hide it in recipes. That, that weird flavor always seemed to come through. But this one is great. You can open it right up. You can repackage it into clean canning jars if you want and store them away. Then whenever you need milk, you can just take a scoop out and put it right into your meal, into your recipe. Stir it into a glass if you want a glass of milk. But it's great to use in your recipes anyway. You just scoop it out and add it when you're making different meals when you might need some milk. Just add the water, scoop out what you need. Then you don't have to worry if you don't use a lot of milk that you're having milk in your refrigerator that's becoming spoiled because this stuff is just like real milk and it is very tasty. Find your favorite kind of hot cereal. Do you like oatmeal, cream of wheat, grits? There are all kinds of hot cereals that are very filling, nourishing, and delicious. Plus, they have the added benefit 
that you can put this in an airtight container. You can get years and years of storage out of foods like oatmeal and other hot cereals that are one ingredient because they are suitable for the longest, deepest, long-term food storage. They can last for decades. Think about the toppings you want for your hot cereal. I like raisins, craisins, maybe you like brown sugar, and whatever the toppings are that you prefer on your hot cereal, make sure that you have some of those on hand as well. Things like dried fruit can last several years. Put them into, say, a clean canning jar with a tight-fitting lid, but don't use an oxygen absorber with dried fruit. The oxygen absorbers are for the longest, driest foods like rice, beans, flour, and those types of foods, and not for these because these have too high of a moisture content. And if you try to use an oxygen absorber with foods that have too much moisture in them, you have a risk to botulism. I made a video about foods you should never use oxygen absorbers. I'll put a link to it so that you can watch that if you have any concerns and like more information. If your family likes pancakes or waffles, look for the ones that you just need to add water. They're great, they last a long time in your pantry, but store them in an airtight container. You don't want the food going stale, and you also don't want any critters chewing on your paper or your cardboard boxes. The fewer ingredients that you need to have on hand to make the meal, the easier it's going to be if you're in a hurry or in some kind of an emergency situation. Try to make it as simple for yourself as possible. Pancake syrups, maple syrups, whatever you like for your toppings on your pancakes or waffles, make sure you have that on hand as well. And realize that real maple syrup, yes, it's very expensive, but it's a forever food. It's never going to spoil, just like honey. It can last forever in your prepper pantry. So have some of your pancake syrup toppings, but maybe put a little bit of maple syrup aside too. What are your favorite beverages? Do you like tea, hot chocolate, coffee? Coffee doesn't store very well long term, so look at the instant coffee. It's like freeze dried or dehydrated crystals, and that can last for a very long time. It may not be your favorite, but if you want coffee, you're definitely going to be glad that you put some aside in your prepper pantry. What about lunch and dinner? It's the same thing. Plan out a few meals that you can safely keep in your pantry that'll last for a long time. Then if you need a quick meal or some emergency comes up, you can go and get one of those prepper meals out of your pantry and have something on the table to feed yourself and your family in a jiffy. Look over canned foods. You can find chilies, beef stews, soup, all kinds of different canned foods that are open and eat. You can look for the packaged meals like the Hormel Completes, meals in pouches that you can just tear open and eat. Get a few days worth of those and then you'll have some emergency meals. Then look for easy to cook foods, mac and cheese, pasta roni, rice mixes, nor sides, a can of meat, a side of vegetables, and you have a meal. Look at different ways that you can combine those meals and have them on hand for your meals. You can get things as simple as a box of pasta, a jar of sauce, and you can have a spaghetti dinner. If you choose some of the gluten-free pastas, realize that they have smaller amount, fewer servings, less ounces in the box. So plan accordingly how much gluten-free pasta would you need with a jar of sauce so that you have enough to eat. There are all kinds of choices that we can make. We can buy everything from canned, ready-to-eat meals and entrees, canned meat, instant potatoes, all types of foods that you can have in your prepper pantry so that you'll have meals on hand. Make a meal plan of what your family likes to eat and those are the types of meals that you want to have on hand in your prepper pantry. One of the things that I've done is take like a Ziploc bag and I put all of the meal together in the Ziploc bag. Then if I need to make a meal in a hurry, I can pull one bag out. You can have dinner on the table within a matter of minutes. So figure out what works for you, but put extra food aside. Think about the essentials. Make sure you have a good supply of those as well. Something I read recently was to plan on having 10% extra, 10% more than you thought you needed, because there's always going to be food that's spoiled, jars that get broken, maybe your Mylar bag got a hole in it, and the food became spoiled. The way we avoid panic buying is knowing that we have done our best, we have things on hand, and we'll be able to make the best of whatever comes our way. 
Stock up on food while things are readily available. The future is uncertain and we all love to eat. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.